Dear Saints, Shalom and goodwill in the face of hardship and sufferings for our Lord Jesus Christ. In St. Cloud, Minnesota, there has been a horrible military experiment underway. The St. Cloud VA displays um, a long uh, quarter of a football field uh, length uh, of the hallways in their main buildings, um, a stretch of colored, multicolored flags across the roof of the medical center. About 100 to 120 multicolored flags, various colors, that are a display of tribute to the pansexual, trisexual, as well as other same-sex code, color codes, other than also uh, the LGBTQ colors that are pagan expressing open sexuality that are some not even related to gender base. That had been there for a long time, uh, several years uh, before um, um, they had uh, legalized gay marriage in um, Minnesota back in 2014. I've used the facility for primary care and mental health for a very long time back in uh, 2009. The chapel is not very filled with God's spirit, uh, and it's... Uh, slightly more Catholic and New Age with neo-pagan um, teachings uh, and spirituality. Um, and it's possibly that uh, the um, chaplains, some are gay and lesbian, which is a surprise. I, apparently this is happening in other chapels, uh, chaplaincies across the United States. And what disturbs me is that they fired a lot of chaplains who were Protestant and some Pentecostal, and then suddenly a lot of them are retiring or they were fired. And there are two um, chaplains uh, at the VA who are Protestant, but they seem kind of tight-lipped, and uh, their under their management in charge uh, will not let them really speak the name of Jesus in prayer or lay hands on the sick or preach to them from Scripture. Um, they mainly are supposed to mention more things like spirituality. The Narconics Anonymous groups uh, can be extremely dangerous unless the Holy Ghost releases uh, the watchman spirit during the meetings. Many veterans uh, attend, but unless the Spirit of God moves suddenly, sometimes you'll have a female witch, which will appear wearing a pentagram, uh, walking in when you finish testifying even slightly about Jesus Christ. And she'll testify about her higher power and having a spirit guide and uh, someone from the dead or a ghost telling them what to do and how to go through a problem. Um, there are also Satanists uh, who are pagan game and gang members such as Latin Kings, Bloods, and Crips, which will lure, lure uh, wandering uh, veterans, um, hobos, uh, or divorced veterans, or um, guys who are homeless a lot, uh, to the Bible study that they had run called the uh, Fire Mission. And you have to understand some positive things about it is that it's mixed up with a lot of pay afford and uh, the bait is the food and the money that's provided uh, when you are running into a situation where they want to help take care of you. But they'll preach from the Old Testament, Leviticus 1 and 2, Chronicles 1 and 2, Kings, and they'll say the stones are scattered and the rock crushes Israel and that God talks through people and symbols and that all things are together for good to those who love God and according to his purpose. Then after a while, there's a situation where they take the small revivals, uh, but the college band, the worship team, uh, are active lesbian and gay and marijuana users. And when you walk into that situation, uh, it's basically they're drawing in Narcotics Anonymous, but suddenly you're around uh, GSR leaders, uh, go to state conferences, are currently secretly using drugs, and they invite you to use the drugs and sleep with them. Uh, much like the cult, uh, the Way, or the Moonies. The local pastors preach from Hosea and Gomer, the prostitute story, encouraging uh, the veterans to marry a hooker in the area. And meanwhile, behind your back, uh, some of our spouses are exposed to uh, other veterans uh, who may be involved in the occult, uh, following uh, the spouses on uh, your ex wives uh, on Facebook. And somehow the VA is going to do an experiment. Um, you know, much of the speculation as it is, there's problems where the wives are remarrying uh, men who are complete strangers uh, online and they're predators. They don't be had predators and they have to divorce them. Um, Christian marriage is under attack and among veterans who uh, who have families who are have guns to defend themselves and resist an order and the market chip cash in society um, is one of the reasons they may be um, coming against our families and the foundation uh, of families are suffering and the children who are victim, victims of divorce and are 
being hurt by social workers and are terrified of them. And the children uh, will beg the social workers to let their parents come back in their lives who've been kicked out of the houses, the veterans who are experiencing this. And um, the for me, this happened to me in the state of Virginia in 2007, between me, Ryan Hamlin, and Caleb, and I can't visit them until they turn 18. And at the time, uh, back in uh, 2007, uh, Caleb was, uh, you know, just, Six months old, and, um, and Faith, uh, I mean, Haley, um, was uh, six, and Faith was 14 in Billings, Montana, and I went to visit her for the last time since I've seen her back in uh, 2007. And um, uh, Haley was upset. She had nightmares about National Guard soldiers coming to the house and shooting her dad twice, and she ran out of the house yelling, Monsters Inc., Monsters Inc., and pointed to the TV, and uh, there was a deadness in the house. Like, the Spirit of God had left the house, you know. And I read in the Bible, Ichabod, the glory of God has left. And I, 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 it scared me because I didn't know what was going on because I walked out of the child protective services, the door locked behind me, and I went out and looked in the sky, and uh, the smoke seemed to form words, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was in the clouds uh, in letters. And I said, well, it wasn't just a vision. It was in the clouds. I was scared of it. That was back in 2007, and I wandered homeless on the streets of Winchester, Virginia, and I got a hotel, relaxed in, I was in and out of there, and then I started traveling, I went to Billings, Montana, and then went to Minnesota, and then to Texas, and back to Virginia, back to Minnesota, you went to California, and the thing about it is, I was really scared, and I didn't know what to do, and um, so I... I started writing a book, and I got published in Veterans Voices magazine. My service back in Korea, I had walked along the sidewalk in 91, October, and I saw a vision of the future, and it was concerning the mark of the beast, and I was scared. And it looked like a big battle for 30, 40 years, and it started with Desert Storm. And it really was amazing. What I started to realize is that... Uh, when I got saved, I got born again in the middle of the night in the base chapel. I said, God, I'm sorry, you're to die. And I was crying, and I saw a Holy Ghost come out of thin air and go inside of me. And I went to the pews, and I looked at the Bible, and I found Hebrews 11, 1. It said, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I remember Paul Alto VA, uh, a Christian, uh, who black Christian, uh, told me I was to preach the gospel to Europe. And I didn't know what that was about at all. And all of a sudden... I uh, didn't look at the TV. It was Charlie, uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas, and it was Linus talking about uh, the birth of Jesus Christ and the story uh, of his birth at Christmas. And um, I was supposed to preach the gospel of Europe on television. I, I didn't know what to do about that. And then I came home from the VA, Palato, and this was after I had, um, took off from my wife after a fight after we just got married and stuff. And I had found a letter on the floor when I was at Sacramento Mental Health Center when they first diagnosed me with uh, epilepsy. Um, it said uh, to Kurt, For God so loved Kurt that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that he believed in him, he will not perish but have everlasting life. Love God. I put the letter in the drawer. I was fascinated by it. Went out to the, the front desk. I said, Is this Sacramento Mental Health Center? And they said, No, no, this is just. What what I said was uh, the paperwork on the letter said uh, missionary um, Bible um, mental health center and I went out to the front desk again and I said is this uh, missionary Baptist uh, Sacramento mental health center no sir it's Sacramento mental health center and that's it went back to the drawer and the letter was gone it scared me I'm like damn so I chewed me out a governor Schwarzenegger had well he, Schwarzenegger Arnold Schwarzenegger had just announced that he was going to run for governor and uh, he walked across uh, the platform area to get to the the, the um, podium to announce his uh, candidacy and he bowed his back backwards in a real odd way like he got hit in the back real hard and he leaned backwards and one foot went backwards and he almost stopped walking and then he propped his uh, upper body up again straight up. And I thought broke back when I looked at it. I thought, what is that about? <laughs> so I got home after they uh, taken me from Second Mental Toll Health Center to the Palo VA. And when I got home, um, Marie gave me a gift of a video called Tears of the Sun with uh, Bruce Willis about the uh, the rescue of the uh, Christian nurse and the Catholic uh, nuns that were helping the uh, African uh, uh, village uh, Got through the uh, gorillas uh, killing many of the Africans in the area, 
And from then on, um, me and uh, Emory struggled until I started getting more benefits from the VA and, and the Social Security disability. But when um, I was at the VA in Martinsburg, West Virginia, I was upset because the PTSD was hard on me. I was getting scared. And I remember back in Korea that uh, the stress of the full legal exercise was incredible. And, you know, colonels and generals came to me and talked to me and asked me what I thought of the whole exercise and about the, the, the service in the Air Force, what it was like for me to be there and what it was like for the other men and women. And I gave a long speech, and it helped a lot. And uh, when I was in the base chapel uh, one Sunday, I gave a little testimony and talked about how long it felt great that the uh, squadron won the best pack half in the squadron. And my squadron commander stood up from behind, even though he was in the chapel that day, and he said, I was there, Mr. Ben gave a speech, and I'm proud of him. And then later on, he took me aside and says, your speech to the uh, colonel won us uh, best uh, security police squadron in the, in the pack half the, this year. And I was really surprised. And after I asked Christ in my heart in the chapel at 2 in the morning, and I told my dad about it and another airman about it, and my dad was scared to death. But he was like, you're born again? And he was surprised. And uh, I wrote for Veterans Voice Magazine for eight years because I wanted to share my story. But I broke it up in uh, telling different um, viewpoints of it because I believe it was about my calling that I got in that chapel but it didn't come home to my heart that I was called until I saw the lights light up in the sky up until Alaska. The lights were so bright I couldn't believe it. I just crashed my, you know, blazer and patrol car into the snow, got out of it, and uh, it was, took a couple steps, and I slipped and hit my back so hard that I blacked out. I got up, and I said, God, what do you want me to do? You want me, want me to preach the gospel or what uh, to all the world? I mean, give me a sign. All of a sudden, a thousand lights, stars, um, just blared all over the sky. It was bright. It looked like 3 a.m. in the afternoon, and it was 2 a.m. in the, in the middle of the morning and night. The northern lights disappeared, and the whole sky was set up like uh, fog lights all over the sky. It was bright, and it was like it wasn't even. It was like uh, it was like a slight blue hue with uh, yellow, uh, and the lights were white too. It was bright everywhere. It was, it was all the stars. And I was flabbergasted, and I took my gloves off. It was not too hot, not too cold. And then uh, uh, I didn't see my breath come out of my mouth. Uh, I felt like room temperature, and it was 60 below uh, when uh, before that started. And uh, 10 minutes, I was staring at all these stars, and I said, oh, my gosh. And then the lights uh, um, stopped, and it went back to dark, and the northern lights were all over the place, and... I knew Jesus Christ was calling me to preach the gospel. And um, that vision I had in Korea started coming through me for the next 30, 40 years. And that's all I've been doing ever since. And I struggled. And I went through two divorces. And when I went through the divorce in Stephen City, um, when Marie got into trouble, and I got in trouble with Martinsburg, with Virginia VA, because I asked for help or hurting my kids. And they said, we'll help you. And when I came home, I, I was kicked out. And Marie said, get out of here. They made a sign protective order. And uh, then I was going here in Minnesota today. But God saved my life, so uh, God bless and look to Jesus Christ to save you.